Welcome, church. Welcome to our Sunday, July 18th, 2021 worship service. This is a time for us all to come together in body and in spirit and to carve out a moment in our busy lives to connect more deeply with God and with one another. And so we invite you, those who are watching us presently and those who will be watching us later in time, to take a moment to sit a spell and to be a part of our family while you are here with us and to take a piece of us with you at the end of the service today. And so as a family, we all know that with families, when there are many hands, it makes for lighter work. And so these are our opportunities for mission and service here at Weston United Methodist Church. Um, as always, on Sundays at 11.30, we will have immediately following the worship service a Zoom fellowship hour for folks who are looking to get some face time with one another. Um, and then immediately after that, at 1 p.m., we will be meeting in our upper parking lot, weather permitting, for in-person fellowship. Um, I was able to attend last week with a group of folks, and we were out there for about two hours. It was wonderful having a chance to talk and to share and to get to know one another. And so I encourage you, if you are looking for a way to more deeply connect with the church community, come on out either via Zoom or in person and spend some time with us. Then coming up on Wednesday at 7 p.m., we will have a church council meeting again via Zoom. Um, as we discovered, the hybrid model was a little confusing, tough to hear one another, so we will be having this meeting as a Zoom meeting, and keep an eye out on your email inboxes for the link to attend that meeting. And then on Saturday at noon, we have our Children's Fun Saturday, or as my kids are now calling it, Saturday School. And it's a wonderful time for the kids to get to know one another and to connect in a different way than we do here in the worship service. And so if you have young ones who are looking to, or you're looking to help them deepen their relationship, this is a great opportunity for them on Saturdays at noon. And so as I mentioned before, uh, this is a busy church and many hands make for light work. And so if you're looking for a way to plug yourself into the local church community, these are wonderful opportunities to do that. And so we encourage you to take part in them as much as you can. And so with the business of the church being taken care of at this point, let us now take a moment to announce to ourselves and to our spaces that this is the moment where we are going to welcome in the spirit where we are going to take a deep breath together and take a moment to center ourselves as we prepare for worship. So let us take that deep breath. Let us take note of where we are right now. Take note of where our heart and our minds and our spirits are being pulled to feel where we are seated, to feel the ground beneath our feet, to lower our shoulders a bit. And let us continue to breathe deeply. As we breathe in, let us breathe in the peace and grace of God. And let us breathe out all of the stress and the anxiety and the worry that we carry with us from the week before and into the week ahead. As we do that, as we breathe deeply, let us center our hearts into God's heart and let us welcome in the Spirit with breath and with prayer.
call ourselves to worship. If you would join me with one voice. And now let us join together for our call to worship. God is with God's people. The Creator dwells in our midst. Listen and hear the Holy One speak. Our hearts long for God's word. We wait upon the Lord so that we may renew our strength. God is our help and our support. The Spirit moves among us to lead us in holiness and righteousness all of our days. With joyful hearts we sing God's praise. With rejoicing we call upon the Lord. The Lord is our hope and our salvation. Come, let us worship the one who dwells with us and still speaks. Amen. Amen. And now let us continue to call our spirits into worship by singing together our opening hymn, number 381. Dollars and cents. 
It's about our prayers and our presence and our witness to the ways in which God is moving and breathing life into our lives every single day. To give back just a fraction of what God has blessed us with is itself an act of worship and a true and deep spiritual practice. And so as we sit back and enjoy the sacrifice of praise that our choir will be bringing us, let us take a moment to consider the gifts that we have received. If we are inclined to give to the church, to support the ministries of this church here in Weston, Massachusetts, then I encourage you to mail your offering or your gift to the church, to give online through our website, or to find other ways and arrangements to ensure that the life and the ministries of Weston United Methodist Church are able to continue even though we are limited in the ways we can gather, we can still give generously and with joyful hearts. And so let us take this moment to consider our blessings and to give our gifts.
people pray our unison prayer of dedication for these gifts which we have received. Holy God, accept these gifts for what they are, sacred expressions of thanks for the abundant grace that you have given us. The gifts we present are not dues necessary to belong to your church or payment given to win your favor. We give freely and with joyful hearts just a fraction of our abundance in you. May our tithes, offerings, gifts, prayers, worship, service, presence, and witness all be used to strengthen your church as we work side by side to share Christ's message of hope, love, and resurrection. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And indeed, it is a powerful name in which we pray, and it is a powerful God to whom we lift up these prayers. And so let us join together again and pray our prayer of confession together. Gentle shepherd, you guide us in right paths. You lead us in the ways of righteousness. But we have allowed our anger, our rage, our greed, and at times even hate to direct our paths. We have overreacted. We have taken more than our share. We have despised others who seem to have it all. Forgive us, God, for not following your ways. Forgive us for not remembering that we are your sheep and you are our shepherd. Forgive us when we have not listened for your voice and instead have acted in the ways of the world. Guide us back to your path, to loving you and loving our neighbors. Help us to unclench our fists and lend out our hands in hope and healing, forgiveness and love. In the name of Christ, our shepherd, we pray. Amen. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd knows the sheep. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep so that the sheep may live. We are part of the flock. We are part of Christ's body. And in Christ, we find wholeness and restoration. Go forth and share this good news. Amen. And now, as a forgiven and a beloved people, let us once again center ourselves in prayer. However you best connect with God or the divine, whether it's with your eyes open or closed or your heads bowed or raised, let us pray together. Shepherd of our lives, guide us to the still waters. Lead us on the right paths. Walk beside us when we go through the darkest valleys. Help us to know your comforting presence is always with us. We know that in you there is nothing to be afraid of. So help us to stand for love and peace and justice. We know that you prepare the table before us, that you care for us, and that we are your sheep. Help us in this world to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. And wherever we may go, may we follow your path. In the name of Christ, the Good Shepherd, we pray this prayer as well as the one your Son taught us so long ago. With our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now, let us continue to pray with our minds as well as our hearts and our mouths. And let us hear our scripture reading for today. Today we are going to hear from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and 53 through 56. Today I am reading from the Message Translation, but I encourage you to follow along or to hear this in the biblical language that best connects you with God. So once again, let us hear from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and 53 through 56. The apostles then rendezvoused with Jesus and reported on all they had done and taught. Jesus said, Come off by yourselves. Let's take a break and get a little rest. For there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. So they got in the boat went off to a remote place by themselves. But someone saw them going, and the word got around. From the surrounding towns, people went out on foot, running, and they got there ahead of them. When Jesus arrived, he saw this huge crowd. At the sight of them, his heart broke. Like sheep with no shepherd they were. And he went right to work teaching them. They beached the boat at Gennesaret and tied up at the landing. As soon as they got out of the boat, word got around fast. People ran this way and that, bringing their sick on stretchers to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, village or town or country crossroads, they brought their sick to the marketplace and begged him to let them touch even the edge of his coat. That's all. And whoever touched him became well. These are the lessons of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. Now the title of our sermon today is Don't Forget to Breathe. Hmm. It's funny how sometimes we need a reminder to do the one thing that is the most connected to life and living, and it's breathing. I know I am constantly in need of the reminder. I'm sure many of us are. I was talking with Cindy a moment ago about how even just walking over here from the parsonage to the church, I realized I wasn't breathing. I was holding my breath. How many of you are actually holding your breath right now and not even realizing it? Or breathing in very shallow breaths, not completely filling your lungs with what your mind, body, and soul actually need? Take a moment, and let's take a big, deep breath. The kind that forces you to notice how tight your chest is. Or that forces you to sit up straight or stand up straight. That's the kind of breath. Now you all are thinking about your breath right now, aren't you? Good, because I am too. I'm paying attention. As your lungs fill, when's the last time you noticed your breath. How busy do we allow ourselves to become that 
we forget to do something so fundamental. Don't forget to breathe. I'm constantly in need of that reminder. And the disciples seem to be needing a reminder as well. Thank goodness for Jesus showing them and us the way. Now, a passage on remembering to take a deep breath and on the importance of rest, as Jesus said to them, let us come away and rest a while. These passages are important. They're important in the work that we do as followers of Jesus. But it's not something that one might expect from this particular gospel, the Gospel of Mark. John, maybe. That's our mystical, magical Jesus. But Mark. Mark is that gospel that is fast-paced. Mark is the point A to point B guy. He does not leave room for extra details. He gets to the point. He leads out unnecessary things. The word immediately is used many times in this gospel. Mark is not the gospel that I would have expected to receive a lesson on breathing and rest from. So what's going on here? See, today's readings are the verses that lead up to some of the most well-known and exciting moments in Jesus' ministry. These are the verses that lead up to the feeding of the 5,000 or the 15,000, if we're counting women and children as well, and the healing ministry of the masses. This is why it struck me as so interesting that the selected passages for, day, for today focus not on the work, per se, but on how the disciples and Jesus prepared themselves to do the work. Take another deep breath. Don't forget to breathe. See, in this gospel, there's a frantic feel to much of the work that the disciples and Jesus undertake. So much so that it's almost jarring when Jesus tells the disciples to get away by themselves and take a moment. As he takes them then into the very wilderness that he had spent his 40 days of meditation and renewal in, where he had encountered temptations and internal turmoils and struggles, he takes them there to find a place to center themselves and to prepare for the work ahead. You see, the success of the disciples' mission and ministry is dependent not just on what they've accomplished among the people, but it's also dependent on how they centered their spirits, how they continue to center themselves, and yes, how rested their minds and their bodies are. And that centeredness, that rest, that's the result of their relationship with Jesus, the one who encourages them to take some time away, who then leads them and teaches them how to do it. It's this relationship with Jesus that brings them then to a place of rest and centering that allows them to move forward with what needs to be done. It's like Jesus is telling them, you've done good work, but don't forget to breathe. The gospel is quite clear here, which doesn't often happen that it's not a matter of how much we accomplish, but a matter of our relationship with God to do that which must be accomplished. And part of that relationship involves taking time to come away and just breathe, just be present with God and with our own spirits. And equally as important, as the invitation from Jesus to come away is the disciples' willingness to listen and follow. 
a willingness to step away from all that needed doing. And with all of those crowds, it would be really hard to miss what needs to be done. But they stepped away, and they took the time to devote to being in God's presence in a meaningful and intentional way. So, when's the last time we did that? I'm not just talking about Sunday mornings or whenever it is that you're able to catch the worship service. When was the last time you allowed yourself to step away and breathe deeply the love and peace of Christ? When was the last time we gave ourselves permission to go into the wilderness of our own thoughts and simply be present to our own spirits? When was the last time we took a moment to work on our relationships with God and the people we love who are journeying alongside us every single day? I know for me, as a mom, as a wife, as a pastor, having four kids, it's hard. I know for me, it's a daily struggle to not push through my spiritual exhaustion. It's hard to remind myself to not forget to breathe. And I believe it's a struggle for so many of us, not just in our community, but in our world especially as we emerge from our pandemic spaces and move toward a return to normal, whatever that means. And that normal really wasn't all that sustainable before, and more than likely it will continue to not be sustainable now. So what can we do? What can we learn from these passages? How can we remember to breathe? How can we accept that invitation from Christ to come away, to prepare ourselves for the work ahead, work that is often daily work and not a once-in-a-lifetime ministry event like feeding 5,000 people, but the day-to-day -day ins and outs of caring for ourselves, of caring for others, of just sometimes waking up and putting one foot in front of the other. How can we do that? Well, we do it the way Jesus taught the disciples to do it. And because we are Jesus' disciples as well, this lesson applies to us as much as anyone else. We take time. We take time to breathe and to come away. First, we take the time to recognize when things are getting to be too much. And instead of pushing through, we take a break. So many of Jesus' ministry moments in all of the Gospels start with, and he went away. He went away to pray. He dispersed the crowds, and he went away. Christ recognized when things were getting to be too much. When the demands upon him, even just the hem of his garment, were too much. When he was setting an example for his disciples to do too much and not rest. In a more modern term, it would be like the flight attendants on airplanes say, to put on your own mask before you put on someone else's. Take time to connect with God. That's the first step. Maybe you do it through scripture. Maybe it's prayer. Maybe it's a nap. Rest is holy and sacred. Maybe, like Elijah, we need a snack as a way to connect. Maybe it's leaving the dishes in the sink to actually 
play. Maybe it's putting your phone down before bed and just taking time to breathe and listen for God's voice, to wait for a movement of the Spirit. It can look like just about anything, but it needs to be intentional and it needs to not be brushed. Secondly, we take time to connect with others. This too is sacred work. As reflections of God's image in the world, when we take time to connect with people around us, those in particular who are closest to us, we are connecting with the divine. Take time to breathe together, to catch up, Make that phone call you've been putting off, or send that text or that email. Let your loved ones know when you're thinking about them in the moment. Write a card or a letter and mail it. Look each other in the eyes when you speak. If, you're not a, if you are a hugger, hug often. If you're not a hugger, Find other authentic ways to connect that are meaningful to you. Maybe it's cooking a meal or having a real conversation without your cell phone at the table. When we connect to one another, we are greeting the face of God. And we are tapping into that amazing Holy Spirit that connects and sustains us all. And lastly, Take time to take care of yourself and connect with yourself. I am giving you permission to take care of you and deepen your relationship with you. This is often the hardest connection to make and to keep. When's the last time you really checked in with your own self. When you've given yourself the space to admit when you are not okay or when you are. And why is this important? It's important because this is how you keep yourself in one piece because the world needs you. God needs you. Your people need you. And they need a you who is centered and not frazzled or drained. They need the you who breathes deeply and is in touch with their own selves and spirit. So this week, let us take that wisdom from these short passages and let's work on these three points of connection with God, with one another, and with ourselves. Let's take from the Gospel this week the Jesus wisdom to take a step back from the things that are leaving us drained and unable to function and instead take a step forward toward a deeper connection with let us hold one another accountable in our work of rest and breath, too. Don't be afraid to ask folks how they're doing with it, or to ask people if they're doing it at all. This is not to shame, but to encourage, because maybe we're the ones who need someone to encourage us to do the same. Let us remember to breathe. to breathe and to rest and to recognize that that is holy work too. May it be so for each and every one of us. Amen.
everyday life to connect, to breathe, and to take in a quiet center, may I offer you a blessing. Go forth in joy and with peace. May you find moments throughout this week that remind you to not forget to breathe. Breathe in deeply the knowledge and the truth that you are loved, that you are beloved, and that you are enough. Give yourself permission to reconnect with yourself and with God. Be strengthened for the work ahead by doing the holy work of breathing and resting. Go forth in peace. Be blessed and be a blessing to all that you meet until we meet again. <laughs>